Fantastic job you've done. Really incredible. And we'll invite the press in, sometimes referred to as the fake news. So you could let them come in, please. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for being here. We took a really incredible tour. Law enforcement has just done such a great job working with the National Guard and working with a lot of people. But we're here to show our support for Kenosha and Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin has been very good to me. I love the people. We've done a lot for the state, and we will continue to do a lot for the state. Uh, we're all in this together, and this was an example of what can happen when you do it right. Violent mobs demolished or damaged at least 25 businesses, burned down public buildings, and threw bricks at police officers, which your police officers won't stand for, and they didn't stand for it. These are not acts of peaceful protest, but really domestic terror. My administration coordinated with the state and local authorities to very, very swiftly deploy the National Guard, surge federal law enforcement to Kenosha and stop the violence. And I strongly support the use of the National Guard in other cities. And the same thing would be happening if we did that. You'd have the same thing happen in Portland. It would happen very quickly. It would all be over very, very quickly. And uh, I just want to thank the two of you for acting so strongly and so bravely and getting it done. And the coordination has been fantastic. You still need that coordination no matter how many people you send in. I just came from a visit of one of the businesses that was burned down, B&L Furniture, and the great 109-year-old camera shop, which I, I really respect because that was a uh, — had a reputation far beyond the state, even. And it's terrible to see. Several other business owners, uh, they're joining us, and uh, we have some in the back also. To stop the political violence, we must also confront the radical ideology that includes this violence. Reckless, far-left politicians continue to push the destructive message that our nation and our law enforcement are oppressive or racist. Uh, they'll throw out any word that comes to them. Actually, we must give far greater support to our law enforcement. It's all about giving them additional support. These are great people. These are great, great people. These are brave people. They're fighting to save people that they never met before in many cases. And they're incredible. We must really be thankful that we have them, and we have to help them do their jobs. We can't be threatening them with their pensions are going to be taken away, their jobs are going to be taken away, everything's going to be taken away. They're going to be uh, living a bad life if, if they utter an incorrect word. You can't do it. We have to have our law enforcement. We cherish our law enforcement. We wouldn't be here without our law enforcement. Even me, I'm, I'm here today. I feel so safe. And you went through hell just a few days ago. But I feel so safe. I better be safe. Right? I better be safe. But we're all safe. And we're safe because of law enforcement. And uh, we honor you. And uh, I will say this. We have to condemn the dangerous anti-police rhetoric. It's getting more and more. It's very unfair. Uh, you have some bad apples. We all know that. And those will be taken care of through the system. And nobody's going to be easy on them, either. And you have people that choke. They're under tremendous — I said it yesterday. I said it last night. They're under tremendous pressure. And they may be there for 15 years and have a spotless record, and all of a sudden they're faced with a decision. They have a quarter of a second, quarter of a second to make a decision. And if they make a wrong decision one way or the other, they're either dead or they're in big trouble. And people have to understand that. They choke sometimes. And it's a very tough situation, right? It's a very tough. Then people call them bad and horrible. and. They made a bad decision. But if you think of it, when they have — and I know you practice this all the time, where you give people uh, literally a quarter of a second to make a decision. And a lot of them can't make that right decision. It's a very tough thing to do. The vast and overwhelming majority of police officers are honorable, courageous, and devoted public servants. They're incredible. Yet many politicians ignore their sacrifice and ignore the African-American and Hispanic-American victims. Uh, we have people — there was love on the streets, I can tell you, of Wisconsin when we were coming in. There was love on the streets. And so many African Americans, Hispanic Americans, I can see waving past her. It was so beautiful to see. They want to have 
They want to have safety. They want to have safety. You look at, I'm not a huge believer in polls, obviously, but you look at polls with its 87 percent want to have great police. They want to have strong police. They want to have safety. They're the ones that are most affected by tragedies like you'll see going around. When these allegations of police wrongdoing and when you see that they have made allegations, they must be fully and fairly investigated. And that's what we're doing. Bill Barr has done a fantastic job in that respect. And uh, we fully understand that because you do, you do have problems the other way, but they're very few. You know, the sad thing is you can do 10,000 great jobs as a policeman or a policewoman. You can do an incredible job for years, and then you have one bad apple or something happens that's bad. And that's the nightly news for three weeks. That's all they talk about. They don't talk about the thousands and thousands of good jobs, the lives that you save, they never talk about. So I'm committed to helping Kenosha rebuild. We all are. Uh, we will provide $1 million to the Kenosha law enforcement so that you have some extra money to go out and do what you have to do. You took a rough, it was a rough week, to put it mildly, and uh, you've done it incredibly well. I'm also providing nearly $4 million to support the small businesses that I talked about today that got burned up, burned down. And we're going to be providing over $42 million to support public safety statewide, including direct support for law enforcement and funding for additional prosecutors to punish criminals and resources to provide services to victims of crime. And that was Bill Barr wanted that money put in. So that's $42 million that'll help with prosecutors and uh, all of the other things that are so important to you. You need that because when you when you grab them and then nothing happens and they're back on the street, that doesn't work out too well. My administration is restoring public safety. We're hiring more police, surging tough on crime federal prosecutors, increasing penalties for assaulting law enforcement and for dismantling Antifa. It doesn't, they don't want to mention the word Antifa. Nobody mentions it. This is a bad group of people. Very, very bad, very dangerous group of people. And, uh, we are doing a big number on Antifa. They're bad. Earlier this year, we announced Operation Legend to surge federal law enforcement to high crime neighborhoods. Uh, it is a thing that has really worked out amazingly well, Bill, but it's really under, sort of really understated in a sense. We, we've already conducted more than 1,000 arrests in our first month in Chicago. We went to Chicago very recently. Obviously, that's been a disaster. Chicago, total disaster, with, again, radical left Democrat, and we just have to straight. It's all Democrat. Everything's Democrat. All of these problems are Democrat cities. We don't want to say it, but it is. The top 10 are Democrat, then you go into the top 25 and take a look at that. It's the same thing. We cut the number of murders in Chicago last month in half. Still way too many, but they, uh, Operation Legend was very, very, uh, very successful. Now it's just really getting going, but they cut it in half and just at its very early stage. This is in sharp contrast to those who want to slash police funding, oppose using the National Guard, and want to hire radical judges and prosecutors who will release rioters, looters, and criminals. We have that in Portland, where the prosecutors don't want to do anything. You can catch somebody doing the worst crime, and they don't want to cut police funding. We want to increase police funding substantially. They want to end cash bail, which has been a killer for New York. If you look at what's happening in New York, they allowed thousands of people out of jail in New York, and they're walking around, and they're causing nothing but problems. Who would not know that? You don't have to know anything about policing. I'm not a policeman, but I would know that if you let these people out, many of them are going to cause tremendous problems. So they want to end cash bail, incentivize prison closures. They want to close the prison so that can't hold anybody reimagine public safety, end immigration enforcement, uh, resume catch and release at the border. Uh, as uh, Chad will tell you, we've had tremendous success on the border. We're up to over 300 miles of border wall, and we're having the best year we've ever had in the border. People are coming in, but they only come in legally, or they, for the most part, they only come in illegally. The wall will be finished very shortly. It's had a tremendous impact. So, and the other thing we want to appoint uh, Supreme Court justices and judges will be up to almost 300 judges by the end of the term and two Supreme Court justices. 
And uh, so we have a lot of things to do. We have a lot of great things to do. But it's an honor to be in your neighborhood. It's an honor to be in your great state, Wisconsin. And we're here for you all the way. Uh, some people thought it would be a good thing for me to come, a bad thing. I just wanted to come. I really came today to thank law enforcement and to just really that what they what you've done has been incredible. It's been really inspiring because you see it happening all over and it just never seems to end. And it never seems to end because it's almost as though they don't want it to end because you ended it really fast. Uh, do you have any questions, please? No, it's not, but yeah. No, it's not. It's uh, just that uh, we're tired of watching every night with Portland. They're on night 104 now, and uh, we're tired of watching it because it could be solved in an hour. And we're tired of watching a mayor that has no clue what's going on. And people are calling our office and people are calling Washington that live in Portland and live in the state. And they're saying, please, please send help. And the governor, we call the governor often. And they say, no, we don't need your help. But I say, your community is burning down. They don't need our help. Now, I don't know if that's political. I don't know what is going on. Certainly not common sense. But we could solve it just like here. We all work together. We came in the federal government, the state government, the city government. Everybody worked together. The senator, the congressman, it was like a beautiful thing. It just came, it just worked. And it was done almost instantly. People were amazed. And as you probably will have to report, maybe people are surprised. There's been zero problem in terms of your safety, our safety. I feel so safe. Four, four or five days ago, James, we couldn't have done this. The law enforcement's been so great. And we could do this in Portland so quickly, so easily, it would it would be incredible. We would have done it in Seattle. We were all set to go into Seattle, as you know, the following day. And they heard that, and they sent the police in, and the police did a good job. But they, the people gave up. They were exhausted. They were there for a, a long time, and they gave up. They were exhausted. Uh, so we're there. I mean, we'd love to help Oregon. We'd love to help, uh, really love to help Portland, because we could solve that problem so easily. We have the people. They're ready. They could be there. and less than an hour, less than an hour, and it would all end. And they got a glimpse of that in this great state. They got a really good glimpse of it. It happened very quickly. And now, I mean, I see it. They're already rebuilding. You're already rebuilding your stores. You'll be rebuilding your stores soon, your camera shop. So uh, we don't want to do that, but at some point, we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it, OK? to the Blake family. I know you didn't get a chance to talk to them, but what would you say to them in terms of the pain they're going through and the questions they have about what happened? Well, I feel terribly for anybody that goes through that. That's why I was so honored to meet the pastors. Uh, I feel terribly for anybody that goes through that. As you know, it's under investigation. It's a big thing happening right now. I guess it's under local investigation. I know, Bill, you're also participating. But it's under uh, your local investigation group, unit, and uh, I hope they come up with the right answer. It's a complicated subject, to be honest with you. Uh, but I feel terribly for anybody that has to go through. And uh, I didn't get to speak to the mother. I hear she's a fine woman. I've heard that from the pastor, uh, a really fine woman. But uh, you can see, when I spoke to the pastors, I, I see exactly what it is, and they understand where I am. And if we can help, we're going to help. But it is a question. It's, it's under investigation. Uh, a lot of things happened with that, and other things, frankly, that we're looking at very, very closely. Okay. Mr. President, question for the pastors: Do not wear body cameras. Should every police officer in the United States wear a body camera? Uh, body cam. Uh, well, that's very interesting. Let me ask Bill to answer that question. Go ahead, Bill. <clears throat> Well, generally, that's, that's a local uh, issue for each police force and each community, the political leaders of a community, to decide upon. But I think most law enforcement people I know uh, who were originally skeptical of body cameras are now coming around to feeling that uh, they actually are a net benefit. I have a question for the 
hostages, am I right? It's a very tough, yes. you know, it's a very, the whole thing with the body cam, you read it and you read two sides of the story. How do you feel about it, Daniel? I believe that body cameras would be very helpful for them. You think they're good? I, I believe they show both sides, where right now officers would be vindicated for some of the things that they've been accused of, and certainly if there were inappropriate actions, those would be captured. But you I overall... Uh, I support them. How about you? We're good with it. We're, it's already been put into the budget for 2021, and... Uh, okay, so you'll be having them. We'll be having them. Okay, good. Now they I like them. Questions for pastors. Um, the problem of police violence has been described as just the problem of a few bad apples, repeatedly. You're um, going to have to speak up, please. Yeah. Uh, the problem of police violence has been described by you, including prisons, uh, as just bad apples, a few bad apples, or people who choke occasionally. Um, some African-American community leaders, and a lot of others, actually, have said it's systemic. Where do you f stand on that? I don't what believe do that. No, I don't believe that. I think the police do an incredible job. And I think you do have some bad apples. I think you'd agree. Every once in a while, you'll see something. And, and you do have the other situation, too, where they're under this tremendous pressure and they, they don't handle it well. They call it choking, and it happens. And uh, no, but I don't believe that at all. I think they're — I've met so many police. I have the endorsement of, like, so many, maybe everybody. And frankly, I think they're incredible people. They want to do the right thing. It's a tough job. It's a tough job. It's a dangerous job. But I, I have to say this to the police. The, uh, the people of our country love you. You don't hear that. You don't hear it from them. But the people of our country love you, and they respect you, and, they, and you know it. You feel it in your heart, or you wouldn't be doing it, or you wouldn't be doing it. But there's a great love. And when they see what goes on, and when they see a, a case like this where it's solved so quickly, they respect the police a lot, really a lot. So I, you should hear it, at least. Follow on that. Um, we're focusing on violent uh, actions, but there have been countless nonviolent protests here in Wisconsin and across the country this summer. Uh, people calling for an end to systemic racism. Do you believe systemic racism is a problem in this country? Well, you know, you just keep getting back to the opposite subject. We should talk about the kind of violence that we've seen in. Portland and here and other places. It's tremendous violence. You always get to the other side. Well, what do you think about this or that? The fact is that we've seen tremendous violence, and uh, we will put it out very, very quickly if given the chance. And that's what this is all about. Uh, yeah, I keep hearing about peaceful protests. I hear it about everything. And then I come into an area like this, and I see the town is burned down. I mean, you look at Minneapolis. They should have acted much quicker. When we got the National Guard in there, it took literally a half an hour. You saw the scene. They formed, they walked, it was over. And they haven't had a problem of any consequence since. Their police weren't allowed to do the job that they could do. They have a very good police department, but they weren't allowed. Now they want to break it up. They want to end it. They don't want to have a police department. They want to not only defund, they want to get rid of it. It's ridiculous. So I just say this, that uh, the kind of violence that I saw. You may have protesters, but you have some really bad people, too. You have anarchists, and you have the looters, and you have the rioters. You have all types. You have agitators. And that's what you should be focusing on with your question. I keep hearing about pro peaceful protests. It's become really, I think it's hurt the media very badly, because you have somebody standing on one of the networks. I won't say which one, but there are more than one, many of them saying how it's a peaceful protest, and over the shoulder, you see the whole place is burning down. It's become a pretty common sight. So I don't view the peaceful protest. I think peaceful protesting is fantastic. I think it's great. But by and large, this is not peaceful protest. When you walk into a, an area and you see buildings that have burned down, and fortunately here we stopped it early, and so the damage is relatively minimal. But when you look at some of these areas that they just don't ask for the help, they refuse to allow us to go in and help them. And by the time you get there, the place is, is disintegrated. And then they say it was a peaceful protest. It's not a peaceful protest, and you shouldn't call it a peaceful protest. Okay, uh, one more, please. Pastor, for the pastors, answer my question, please. Uh, my, my question was to the pastors. Say it again. The peaceful protests that have happened. You're going to have to speak up, sir. The peaceful protests that have happened, you've acknowledged some of them are peaceful. They're calling for structural 
contained. Mr. Blake was shot I mean, seven times in the back. Sure. Do you believe that there is a need for structural change? What is your message? Well, I think people, people are calling protesting? for structural change, and then you could take the people of Kenosha that aren't here and that you won't see and that aren't protesting, but they want change also. They want to see law and order. That's the change they want. They want law and order. They want the police to be police. They want the police to do what they do better than anybody else in the world, and that's what they want, too. You don't see them marching, and you don't see them on the streets. But what they want is they want great police force. They want uh, people that are going to keep them safe, where their houses aren't broken into, where they're not raped and murdered. That's what they want. And they're protesters, too, but they don't walk down the street, up and down the street. So, uh, you know, just the way it is, just the way it is. So I want to thank you all, and I'll see you back at the plane. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Fantastic job. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. He laid him out. He laid him out, you guys. He laid him out. You gotta get down. Hey, there's a pair of bags. Can you can you call for the pair of bags? We got shot. Yeah, he's hit. He's hitting his chest. He's hitting his chest. Give me this. Catch your kicker. Catch your kicker. That was not me. I just hit. 
Come on. Hey, look at me. Yeah. Keep him right there. We're coming out to you. We got right for our bearcat. We're coming out to you. Back up, back up. Pointing it out for you. Appreciate it. Affirmative, we got a 32 west of the body back on 60. Looks like a P95 and 14. Do you be fair back up for me, guys? Absolutely. I'm, I'm with these guys. I get, I get it. Back up for me. All right. Yep.